Presumed human remains were recovered among some of the Titan submersible wreckage, according to the U.S. Coast Guard. Here's a series of clips with more details. Well, we are following some breaking news at the moment. The U.S. Coast Guard has just said presumed human remains were recovered from the Titan submersible wreckage. News Nation's Evan Lambert is following the latest. Evan, this just dropped from the Coast Guard. Um, what do we know here? Yeah, Blake, so we got this update from the Coast Guard about 25 minutes ago. As you said, quote, presumed human remains, they say, were found among some of the wreckage of the Titan submersible. We had seen pictures of the submersible wreckage today in Canada, offloaded onto shore in Newfoundland, Canada. And now we know, according to the Coast Guard, that human remains were among some of that wreckage. I want to put up the statement, uh, the relevant portion of the statement from the Coast Guard. It says in part, quote, United States medical professionals will conduct a formal analysis of presumed human remains that have been carefully recovered within the wreckage at the site of the incident. And we do have some of the pictures of the pieces of wreckage offloaded today from a ship in Canada. You can see what appears to be the nose cone, the front of the submersible that surrounds the area that would have been the porthole, also a twisted piece of the hull and some wires, uh, potentially maybe the controls or a portion of the controls of that submersible. But again, really just within the last 20 to 30 minutes, uh, some information that families likely have been waiting on, that human remains were discovered. We had heard from the Coast Guard that they would be especially careful in trying to find that wreckage uh, to be aware of any remains that were to be found. But we now know that the remains, along with the evidence, will be transported on a U.S. Coast Guard cutter from Canada to the U.S. to be part of this investigation. It's also likely uh, that officials will try to identify the remains. No information about to whom those remains belong, uh, but obviously uh, families uh, likely were waiting for some amount of information regarding their loved ones and any remains that could be recovered. The Coast Guard saying that they did so today. Well, it's surprising that they're saying that there are these presumed human remains that were found along with the other debris there on the ocean floor. Back last week when this was all happening, uh, they described this catastrophic implosion as so violent at such depths that it was unlikely that there would be anything recovered, let alone any sign of human remains of the five who perished in this accident. So that's really startling that they have uh, announced this just a few moments ago. Uh, so that, along with the other debris here that's been pulled up by the salvage company, is headed to investigators as they try to figure out what caused this to happen. As you know, there was a lot of speculation, a lot of criticism of the company, OceanGate, the CEO, Stockton Rush, uh, the pilot who also died on this on this uh, voyage, on the submersible, uh, because this craft had not been independently certified, safety certified by any of the maritime agencies that do that sort of thing. It wasn't required to as it was operating out in international waters. But there was some criticism from within and outside of the company suggesting that it wasn't, that the, the vessel shouldn't be operating at those depths some two and a half miles down to see the Titanic wreckage uh, with passengers aboard, that it wasn't safe. Uh, and then we had this, this catastrophic accident last week. Uh, so more for the investigators to look at. The U.S. Coast Guard is leading the investigation. They've convened what's called a Marine Board of Investigation, which is the highest level of investigation that the Coast Guard can organize. Uh, it's a multinational effort. The Canadians, the French, the British are all involved in this because they had nationals aboard the submersible or because they are involved in this rescue and um, search and recovery operation as it evolved into uh, over the past number of, of days. Um, the salvage company says that its operations out there to bring back more debris have ended. Uh, so they apparently have what they're going to have, and they're going to try and start piecing this together to see what happened. It's not just about the cause. They're trying to determine if there should be more regulations regarding these submersibles, which are largely unregulated, particularly when they operate so far out in international waters. Uh, and again, a lot of criticism of the, the company, OceanGate, the yeah. CEO, the pilot, uh, the material that this craft was made out of, which is not typical. It was carbon fiber, not steel and, and titanium. Uh, so again, a lot of questions and this big development today that there are, in fact, a Apparently, human remains that have been recovered as well. A somber moment at Quayside as the debris from the Titan submersible was unloaded. 
Ship workers attempted to cover the fragments, but some pieces were still clearly identifiable. A titanium end cap from the cylinder-shaped carbon fibre sub with a large hole where a viewing window was once positioned. The rear equipment bay thrown clear in the violent implosion that occurred nearly four kilometres down. And the landing frame the sub used to sit on a flat surface. The question now is whether investigators have enough material to reconstruct what happened. I think the key parts um, to look at are the, the interface between the acrylic window and the titanium um, hemispherical domes, the end caps, and also the, the area where the carbon fibre would have been bonded to the titanium flanges. So I could see from the footage that both of those components were recovered, which is as much as we can hope for. Seeing the debris come ashore will have been a painful sight for the families of the five men who died. British explorer Hamish Harding, the British Pakistani businessman Shazada Dawood and his son Suleiman. All perished, along with French diver Paul Henri Nagelet and Stockton Rush, the CEO of Oceangate. Recent days have seen concerns highlighted about whether the sub was built to the best standards and with sufficient testing. These are all issues now that the US and Canadian authorities will probe as they examine the debris. Somewhere in this tangled mess may be clues to what went so tragically wrong. The return of the Titan debris to port in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador on Wednesday is a key piece of the investigation into why the submersible imploded. Twisted chunks of the 22-foot submersible were unloaded at a Canadian Coast Guard pier. I am grateful for the coordinated international and interagency support to recover and preserve this vital evidence at extreme offshore distances and depths. U.S. Coast Guard Chief Captain Jason Neubauer said in a statement, the evidence will provide investigators from several international jurisdictions with critical insights into the cause of this tragedy. There is still a substantial amount of work to be done to understand the factors that led to the catastrophic loss of the Titan and help ensure a similar tragedy does not occur again. The Canadian ship Horizon Arctic carried a remotely operated vehicle, or ROV, to search the ocean floor near the Titanic wreck for pieces of the Submersible. Pelagic Research Services, a company with offices in Massachusetts and New York that owns the ROV, said on Wednesday that it has completed offshore operations. Pelagic Research Services team is still on mission and cannot comment on the ongoing Titan investigation, which involves several government agencies in the U.S. and Canada, said Jeff Mahoney, a spokesperson for the company. They have been working around the clock now for 10 days through the physical and mental challenges of this operation and are anxious to finish the mission and return to the their loved ones, Mahoney said. One of the experts the Coast Guard consulted with during the search said analyzing the physical material of recovered debris could reveal important clues about what happened to the Titan, and there could be electronic data, said Carl Hartsfeld of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Certainly, all the instruments on any deep sea vehicle they record data. They pass up data. So the question is, is there any data available? And I really don't know the answer to that question, he said Monday. A spokesperson for the International Maritime Organization, the UN's maritime agency, has said any investigative reports from the disaster would be submitted for review. Member states of the IMO can also propose changes such as stronger regulations of submersibles. Currently, the IMO has voluntary safety guidelines for tourist submersibles, which include requirements they be inspected, have emergency response plans, and have a certified pilot on board, among other requirements. Any safety proposals would not likely be considered by the IMO until its next Maritime Safety Committee, which begins in May 2024. Keep in mind that there is still a substantial amount of work to be done to understand the factors that led to the catastrophic loss of the Titan and help ensure a similar tragedy does not occur again. What's next? The Coast Guard said its Marine Board of Investigation would continue to collect evidence and interview witnesses before holding a public hearing on the tragedy.